before you clap I met her 23 years ago that is some of you have not been born by then <laughs> amen I met her when I was in secondary school and she was in final year student of UNICEF then she used to visit our school then our school fellowship you know we are doing fellowship we are just doing church as in you know 4 p.m just by reflex action you just have to see yourself in church it's just in fellowship so that mother man their fellowship there those counselors you know our mates over there counselors they why didn't you come to fellowship no they were the ones that used to speak speak in tongues then and they speak in tongues to everybody would just what you mean speak in tongues as in so we organized a program a meeting so she came around and we told her she said okay that I'm going to send speakers to you so that next weekend she sent two young men two young men you know almost like the size of one of our pastors now you know very slim I don't want to call you know, very slim two of them they came that first day, what happened was something that we could not explain. But I was not there because, you know, I've told the story. I went to carry the food and I missed the Holy Spirit. You know, like some of you now, if something, something, somebody will call you, call you to tell you now we've on now. On my Lord and all, but I go give you a well in our room. I said, Give what Jeff, but I'm going to give you a sign. I said, Okay, go to lose it. That was what happened to me that day. But then they now told us they were going to come again. So that upper week, they came. For the first time in my life, friends, I met the power of God. That is, like electrifying power of God. I'm someone that, that used to be very analytical, like some of us, you know, very analytical. Something will be happening. You know, like in 2017, a lady said that she was just seated. And then people were just praying in tongues everywhere. She was asking her, I said, what is all this? She just sat down there. That, that all she could now remember was that someone was helping her to gather herself on the floor that she was scattered that was how she, re, that she believed that there's power of God you don't need to get to that point to believe that there's power of God but I, I was glad that she gave that testimony so that was how my life started changing by meeting one lady I don't know how to explain I'm not trying, I'm trying actually what I'm trying to do to, is to bring her CV that is, I, I, if I don't say this this is one lady that souls is like soul winning. I don't know how to explain it. As in, she drinks it like water. If you look at her feature, it does not, you, you'll be thinking, hey, Onya. But her content, her content, eh? She's a doctor as an PhD holder. And. Don't, you don't clap your hand. Please, allow me to introduce her. Somebody will say, ah, how are these people boosting, boosting somebody before God? See, eh? Yeah? There was something God was telling me the other day. We are saying we lay our crown, we lay our crown. Let us bring that crown and weigh it. So that if we are laying it, we know what we, we know. So that people of the world will know that all these things we have acquired, we can still lay it down. So when we talk about the people God has, it's not as though we are trying to elevate them more than God. We are trying to show that these ones are not just. These are men that have touched the power of God. And then they are advancing on the platform God has given them and then advancing in this platform. And let me even tell you, sir, the PhD she got is not, is not here, it's in South Africa. If you want to know. So what I'm trying to say So that when we say go and worship You look at yourself in the chest and say You see this mommy see you're looking at You see this lady If you watch yesterday she was She was, she was following us to do a trip Yeah and if mommy see Mommy see is not somebody you say uh, ma, She will come and follow you and start washing that plate the kind of connections she has. Where did she, where, Mama, where did you even go to that conference? Is it Korea or we herself? She sent the pictures. I was intimidated. 
Every time I'll keep on telling her, Mama, please, oh, don't lose my number. I still have your own. So next time, if you look at me, you just know I'm not a small person. I have connections. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, this is somebody, even Pastor calls Mama. I don't know what I'll call her. <laughs> mama, eh? If not for anything, eh? Mama, you don't know how privileged I am. Do you know what it means? Praise the Lord. I want you to. I want you to see how it is. I want you to see how it is. You see all these KIC children now? One of them. And then you, you are in final year, and then one of them. That is, as in, I was in secondary school, she was in final. When I was in second year, that was when she was doing her master's. That is, there's no, only here she got that money in any level. The only connection, you know, I told us that when you are seated with Christ, all these men and women, big, big men and women, are your brothers and your sisters. You don't need to be afraid of them. The only thing you do is that you honor them, you follow them, you learn from them. This is one lady because you know a man trained me, but God said to me, It's easier for you to go to stay under a man. Go and serve her. God said to me, Go and serve her. That's why sometimes when I do some of this, she, like, she wouldn't know. God told me, Go and serve her. Till tomorrow, if she gives me her cloth, I'll wash it. With me and this, my anointing, I will wash it. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes, ma'am. Because it's easier to submit to you say you submit to a man. A man is mm -mm, submit to a lady. Let's see. Lady to lady. And 23 years later, the same lady. Do you know? Do you know, do you know the length? I don't play with those people that, that came to our school. If you know where special science school are bag and are is, you know that it's not it's not easy to walk down. Mama, you know what I'm saying now. There's no shade. Anabwana anaja. So you have to trek for about 30 minutes to get to my school. And they were coming for what? Secondary school students for outreach. But they did not know that there were bombs and uh, artillery in that place. Of which I am one. And here I am today doing the will of God because somebody went. I am greatly honored, privileged. I feel like breaking down the wall to have Dr. Chinere Igadi in our midst. Mama, you are welcome. Mama, you are welcome. Praise the Lord. I'm shy. <laughs> oh Lord, we thank you. We give you praise for this opportunity to share with your people. Lord, our prayer is that whatever little that you're going to drop in our hearts today, we bear everlasting fruits in Jesus' name. Thank you for what you made out of us, Lord. Is your doing and is marvelous in our sight. It can only be you. It can only be you. We are just eating vessels that you have made something great out of. May your name be praised, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You can get seated. I'm so happy being here today. I've always come, though many of us may not know me because for some time, I think maybe for like two years, I've not been here. But anytime I'm here, I'm like, I'm, in, I'm back home. You know, thank God for Mommy Eve. God has used her greatly, even though she says, I've done this, I've done that. Sometimes I don't even remember some of those things that I did. I like listening to her because, yes, in as much as, yes, God used us to bring them up. But I found out that I can't even teach as much as she can teach now. As in, 
I can't do the things she's doing now. That's the truth. So sometimes I just come here to fellowship with them just to listen to her. I enjoy it. And it gives me joy. And that's why, you know, having Jesus and loving him is important. Because in some other circles, you, somebody will feel jealous. That I, what is she trying to be? But I'm so happy anytime I see her. She's so great. She and the husband. You know, yesterday when they were discussing about marriage issues, she told you that her engagement or her work to her marriage was a rough one. Yes, it was. In fact, the crying was done in my house. <laughs> the cryings, they were done in my house. At the time, I was say, maybe you people shouldn't be. Just, just pray. If God is not leading you, cut this relationship. The day she came back and said, the Lord said I should go ahead. I said, once the Lord says, and look at today, you won't believe they've never, qu they don't quarrel. Oh. These were people that it was like this marriage will never be, but they don't quarrel. Very nice couple. I admire them a lot. Mommy, thank you for bringing me here. I think what she just did this weekend, don't mind that, is just to bring me to Oka to take care of me, to give me a treat. She didn't bring me to come and minister to you. She has done the ministration. I just came for a treat. You know, you needed to see where they lodged me. You, you needed to taste the Onubu soup. It was awesome, you know. So I, I was just laughing all through yesterday. I said, this lady is just funny. She just brought me here to give me a treat. Not that she wanted me to come and minister. Because she can do more than what I would do. You know, and that's okay if the Lord wants me to come and have a treat. Why not? In fact, this morning when I was speaking with my younger sister over WhatsApp video, she said, your face is glittering. I said, it's God's presence. You can't believe I've been awake since 12. Just talking with the father and fellowshipping with him. 12 p.m. I've been awake since 12 p.m. Is it p.m. now? 12 a.m. That I've been awake up till now. She said, you look, I can't explain. I say, it's God, or it's his glory and his presence. And that's how it works. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're trusting God to bless us today. Eb has been wonderful. She amazes me. Even today, I've learned again. Coming to Oka this weekend, I've learned some new things from her. That's how I do. I seize every opportunity I have to learn. To improve myself, to get better. You know, they are into ministry, but we are not fully into ministry. We are doing lecturing job and then doing the ministry. So, but for some time, I've not taken care of ministers in recent times. And um, so what she brought me to do was to teach me the new way of taking care of ministers. And I've taken it. Praise the Lord. That's how I learn. I don't miss any opportunity I have to learn. And I know. There's a reason why God has brought me. And the Lord is going to bless, to bless you. Well, our team this weekend is, stoop, she stoops to conquer. But I will be speaking on the topic, the power of waiting. The power of waiting, that's what I'll be speaking on for this morning session. Uh, then in the evening, uh, we can be talking on another thing. It is a kind of a continuation of the power of waiting, but that will be being filled with hope while you're waiting. What does it mean to wait? You can wait on the Lord. You can wait upon the Lord. Most times when we talk about waiting upon the Lord in those days, what comes to, my, to mind is, are you fasting? You know, maybe somebody visits your house or your room and you offer something. The person says, I don't want. The next question will be, are you waiting? I don't know if you still use it today. Okay, somehow. So, it, what comes to my mind is, to mind when you say, are you waiting, is you're fasting. Yes, fasting is part of it. Praying is part of it. But that is not just all that is to waiting. So, you can wait on the Lord in prayer. You can wait on the Lord in fasting. You can also wait on the Lord for the fulfillment of his promises. You can also wait for him. Wait on him for, for change. To change you, to transform you, you know. So, to what it means to wait on the Lord is that we are.
hoping on the Lord to do something, hoping on the Lord to act. So we wait on the Lord to act. We wait on him to save. We wait on him to deliver. We wait on God to show forth his to reveal or show forth his glory. We wait on the Lord to answer our prayers. We wait on the Lord to renew our strength. We wait on the Lord to avenge us for people who have offended us. We wait on the Lord to do what only God can do. That's what, what we wait on him to do. We hope, you know, we trust him. You know, looking on to him that ah, he's going to deliver, he's going to change, he's going to reveal his glory. Many people in the Bible waited. In fact, Job came to a point, waited for his answers to be, to be answered. At a point, it was too unbearable that he had to say, I will wait, even though he slays me, I will wait till my change comes. Job waited. Many others did. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abadnego, they waited for the Lord to deliver them from the fiery furnace. They were asked to bow to another God, to another idol, something that will not be the first place in their lives. They refused. They said no, that they will only bow to the Most High God, to the living God. They were threatened. So many things were done to say, if you don't, you're going to lose your life. We're going to put you in this fire you're seeing, and it will be multiplied or made hotter seven times. They said, well, we don't care. They said to the king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. Whatever you want to do, you... I believe in their hearts. They might be thinking that since they stood for the Lord, that before they will put them in that fire, that the Lord will do or show forth. <laughs> they were trying to carry them. The Lord did not show. He didn't come. <laughs> and he waited. The people that said we are not careful. To say to a king we are not careful to answer you. And yet the Lord was watching. You know if he's in our uh, slangs. He say he, the, the Lord no show. You know. He didn't show, and, show up and they threw them into the fire. So they waited for his deliverance from that threat and from that thing that would have consumed their life. But the Lord eventually showed up. But that was when they were already in the fire. Little wonder the Bible says that when you pass through the waters, they will not sweep over you. In Isaiah, he said, when you pass through the fire, the flames shall not consume you. It didn't consume them. They waited for the Lord. Daniel also waited for God's deliverance from the lion's den. He did nothing, but they conspired against him and took him and put him in the lion's den. They thought the lion would eat him up. The king could not sleep because of Daniel. A time came, in fact, he had to wait all night to, so that by morning he would go and see. He was wishing nothing would happen to Daniel. Daniel stood for the Lord, but yet he was put in lion's den. Not that he sinned. Not that he committed any atrocity. He, went, he hoped, you know, he stood for the Lord. The Bible said that when they were looking for something that they would use against him, they could not find any. Yet he was put in the lion's den. But thank God, the Lord showed up again and delivered him. Hannah waited on the Lord to answer him. To, to answer her, sorry, to bless her with the fruit of the womb. The Lord eventually answered. Elizabeth prayed. She waited on the Lord to answer her prayers for the blessing of the child, of, of, for the blessing of the fruit of the womb. And in Luke 1, I think 37 or 38, she eventually said, when she was pregnant and the angel went and spoke to the cousin Mary and said, your auntie is in her fifth moon. He who was said to be barren, he who was said that she will not be able to conceive is in her sixth month. And Elizabeth confessed and said, the Lord did this for me. He has favored me and he has taken away my reproach. And now I am pregnant for a child. So she waited for the Lord to answer her prayers. Remember I said 
that we are waiting on the Lord to act, to deliver, to save, to show his glory, to answer our prayers, to renew our strength. Job waited for the Lord to renew his strength because at a time, his strength failed him. You can imagine somebody, he's talking about losing his, all his children, all his cattle, his wealth, and then they now came to tamper with his health. He didn't know it was just a drama that the enemy put up to test if this man truly loved God or is it because of what the Lord has blessed him with. So he waited on the Lord to, re to renew his strength. Thank God at the end of the day, the Lord showed up and the Lord renews his strength. So we wait on the Lord to do only, there are so many, we will not get into all that. David also waited for the Lord to deliver him from the attack of the enemy. Saul pursued David, pursued him for what he did not know about. Just that he helped win a case for the nation, for the country. He should be applauded. But rather, Paul was jealous and started pursuing him. He will hide in the cave. He will run all night. He waited. He said, my soul waited for the Lord to deliver me. And eventually the Lord delivered him. In fact, put his enemy, King Saul, into his hand. But thank God for such men that will not avenge by themselves. Thank God for such women that will not avenge for themselves, but we wait for the Lord Mosai to avenge for them for whatever offense anybody has done to you. So many, many, many people waited. Friends, we wait all the time. We wait for the bus to get filled up so that we go to Onisha, don't we? We wait to see our lecturers in the office. Sometimes you may wait till evening. If it was the kind of supervisor I had those days, if you wait and wait, and you make the mistake, for, mistake of calling him on the phone, he said, uh, sir, you will, you know, structure the word and your expression so that he will not get angry. He says, uh, prof, you see, um, good afternoon, sir, you've greeted before. You're greeting the third time to know how to put your sister. Please, I've been waiting. It's just that I want to know if you will still come back to the office. Hey, you have committed. He will say, so you're now the one who employed him. You want to know when he will come? You're asking him where he is. You're not afraid? Not these days that students will be in their bedroom and call and say, eh, Doc, I want to know if you're, if you're in your office. If you now say you're in your office and say, okay, you can come. It's okay, I just wanted to check. That's when she will go and take her bath to come and see you. We see a lot of things. But those days, hey, you will explain who gave his number to you. Not to talk of calling him to ask where he is or if he will come back. In fact, you will suffer for months for asking that question. You know? So we wait for our lecturers to you know, maybe submit our project right up to ask them about our seminar topic. We wait, you know, for Amazon deliveries. Many of us, how many of us have bought things from Amazon? You, or um, there's the one we use in Nigeria, Jumia. You wait for their deliveries, Abby. You know, you will always, you're expectant. You want to see how that ring looks like. You want to see how that perfume smells that you ordered. So we wait for uh, Jumia deliveries or for Amazon delivery. We wait for, for those of us that are working, we wait for our paycheck to hit our bank account. Hey, I can't forget what happened to us between February and May. We were not paid. In this COVID, the lecturers were not paid. If you didn't register for IPs, nothing for you. It was tough. In fact, the day they said that it's like they're preparing something. Come and see WhatsApp groups. Somebody say, has it entered? As it entered, people were waiting for the alerts to land. And because it's three months, he it said it's going to check the, uh, you know, the account number. So we waited for it, and it came, and it brought joy. So we wait all the time, and we wait for all sorts of things. So why can't we wait on the Lord? If we can wait for Amazon, if we can wait for our mails to be responded to, if we can wait for our jump result to gain admission into higher institution, if we can wait even for, uh, maybe we go to the market to buy a particular clothes they said it's out of stock, we're going to, you will wait and fast sometimes say, oh, I can't wait to see this cloth. Can't wait to see this shoe. 
you know so we wait all the time we wait for all sorts of things so waiting on the lord should not be a big deal because waiting is part of our life praise the lord so i don't know what you're waiting for friends but the truth is that sometimes we even wait to fall asleep for those of us that find it difficult to sleep yeah some sleep so easily but there's something you have to turn and turn to fall asleep so you wait to fall asleep and all that you wait for your food to get done so that you eat it so these are so many things that we wait for but as we wait on the lord we wait on him because he is god because he's god and he can do what we cannot do if, if it's things that we can sort out ourselves there won't be any point waiting there won't be any reason for the wait but we wait on him because he is God. And let me tell us, waiting on God is good for us. You may not appreciate it at the time you're waiting. But by the time you're done with waiting, and what you're waiting for, the expectation is met. I tell you, it is good for you. Yeah, waiting is not easy. It is hard work. But it will do a lot of good to our lives. Nobody likes waiting. That's the truth. You know, that's little wonder. We use that saying, oh, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait to see this. I can't wait to be in ladies' class. I can't wait for my wedding. I can't wait for that right man to show up. We don't like, you know, these days I change. I, I, I will always say, I can wait. I, I can wait to, you know. Nobody likes waiting. It's hard work. It's not easy. But the truth is that, waiting does a lot of good to us because it changes us when we are waiting the lord uses that process that time that period to change us he uses it to strengthen us he uses it to work out a lot of things in our lives as we will see as we go on so we wait the psalmist said in psalm 27 13 to 14 he said, I have confidence that I will see the goodness. I have confidence that I will see the goodness of the Lord. And the next verse now said, wait on the Lord. Okay. I had, what's that? I had faith. No. Okay, wait on the Lord because of, okay, yeah, be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The psalmist was said to be a man after God so hard, is it not? If this is a man after God so hard, it, it means he understands what the Lord wants, what our maker, what the king wants from us. He said, I am confident that I will see the goodness of the Lord. We wait because we have this confidence that the Lord or that we will see his goodness. That's why we should wait. And truly because no word of God fails. He said, heaven and earth will pass away. But no word from the Lord will fail. That's why he, when he says wait, he, it means he will do us good after waiting. Okay? Remember, if any of your uncle, you are, call and say, hey, uncle, I need this. Or daddy, I need this. Say, just wait. Eventually, when they come back to you, get back to you, don't they do you good? How much more our heavenly father? The Bible said, if our earthly father knows how to give good gifts to their children, if you ask them for bread, they don't give you stone. If you ask for fish, they don't give you snake. How much more will our heavenly father give to them that love him or that ask of him? So we wait because Psalm 27 says that I have this confidence that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Say, wait, I say, wait. Sisters, I say, do what? Wait. The, the righteous must not make haste. Yes, we should not mistake waiting with maybe some satanic delays. That's why, anyway, I will still mention that. Because when you are in the place, waiting in the place of prayer, when you are waiting strategically and expectantly, God will be, you will be in tune with your father that you will know when the waiting is actually because of what God is working out from your life, working in your life, or is it because of satanic 
delays, but waiting does good to our lives. If you get to Isaiah 40, 30, 31, that's our one course scripture. I think I would want us to read that one. Isaiah 40, we won't be reading. I may call some scripture, but we won't read all of them. Um, so that we'll be able to finish what we have. There's so much to share. Isaiah 40, 30 to 31. Please, if you see it. Okay, is it there? Okay. Let's start from 30, 30 first. 30. Okay, okay. Okay, I thought I was seeing 31. Yes, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You know, we, they say, it's usually said, or the Bible also said it, that the glory of the young people are, uh, is their strength. Now, if what is the glory of the young people, which is their strength, will someday or sometime fail them, you know, and they will now become utterly tired, utterly weak, it means that there's someone that everybody, even the strong, should depend on wholly depend on. Jeremiah 9 said something. He said, let no man boast in his strength. Let no man boast in his wealth. He said, let him that will boast, boast in this. Bum, bum. Eh? Colon. He said, let him that will boast in this, that he knoweth the Lord. Let not the strong man boast in his strength. Let not the, you know, the knowledgeable boast in his intelligence. But if you will boast, let him boast in this. He now told us what to, in this, colon, that he knoweth the Lord. Because that is where the actual strength lies. The Bible said the young men will grow weak. They will get tired. They will faint at some time. But they that wait upon the Lord will do what? We renew their strength. He said they will mount up with wings like eagles. That's the one that interests me. What, how does a, an eagle mount up with his wings? They say that every other bird does not like the storm. But an eagle lo loves the storm, not just likes it. An eagle loves the storm. And what does storm stand for? Challenges. Um, difficulties. Obstacles. Okay? And all those. So, the ego loves, you know, the storm. Because when it flows up and the wind is coming against it, other birds, they will want to hide from the fierceness of the storm. But you know what the ego does? The ego will use the wind of the storm to propel itself higher to a higher altitude. And instead of now using its own energy, it will use, you know, the, 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 the force that comes from the wind of the storm. So when it's now soaring, it is soaring and gliding at a very easy way. It will not use its energy. It's so easy for it to just be lifted. What does that tell you? If they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength and they will mount up with wings like eagles. Which means that waiting upon the Lord helps us to use the wind of challenges. Instead of letting it to come to break us. Instead of letting it to destroy us. The wind of, that comes with these challenges we do what? We lift up us to a higher altitude. And we will be placed on a higher pedestal than where we were standing before the challenges. Are you getting it? Are we together? Is it making sense? So, we, he will renew our strength. We will mount up with wings like ego. We shall run. Whether with your vision, the Lord, vision God has given you. You can run with whatever desire and plans that you have. And you will not faint. You will walk and you will not be weary. So, you see that waiting on the Lord does good to our life. Even though it's not easy to wait. When I finished secondary school, I... Made a, I got A's, 
A's and C's, and I got P7 in mass. Um, that was because I was helping someone in the hall. Then I wasn't born again. So I will write, I wait for my neighbor to write. By the time she, he, she will finish, I will turn my book to write. When they were saying, get ready to stop, I realized I was just in number four. And I think then, mass theory, you answer up to eight questions or so. Yeah, eight. And I was in number four. It was clear to me that I have failed. When the result came out, I got a P7 in mass. And my dad said, you're not going to take GCE. You're going back to school. And this time, not to special science school, but to one community school in, in Amansi. And that school, they don't plait their hair. And I used to have very long hair that is thick and black, you know. I didn't want to cut this hair. I begged my daddy. I said, please let me do GC. He said, no way. You will not do GC in this house. If you don't want to go back to school, you forget it. Oh, my God. I checked, what do I do? I need the wayek. I need the result to enter school. It was, a, it, it, it was a time of waiting. Eventually, I made up my mind. I said, okay, I'll go back. I'm ready to cut the hair. After much, much crying and nobody listening to me. And I went back to, it was not easy. You know what it means to, you know, your mates are now saying, I've got admission in UNIZ, in UNIBEN, and you, you're saying, I'm going to Amansi to write mass. It's not usually easy when your mates leave you where you are. But somehow, somehow, I went back to this school. I, I went to school. And I stayed there, I think, two months. But you know the amazing thing about that waiting? That was when I met Jesus. It was in that time, and see, one day they were having a fellowship. And a friend of mine in the class invited me. And I went. Yes, I've always been a good girl, but there's a difference between just being good and having Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. So when, after preaching that day, the thing made sense to me, and I had to surrender my life. That was how my building started. So you can imagine, maybe I got admission into Uniport, and I went for medicine. You know, when you get there now, you will want to do at first sitting medicine i may not have had that opportunity to get born again look at what my repentance has done to my family look at what my repentance has done to people around me so anytime i look back to those days i will say i always thank god that i failed mass i didn't even fail it i got p7 but my dad doesn't want P7. And not only that I received Christ. In fact, I didn't have need for the other result. Because that mass, I got seven. And I got it eight ring. Uh, one brother told me his story. How he, you know, he got admission for, he wanted medicine by all means. But eventually he didn't get it. They gave him botany. You know, those days, such courses were dreaded. You say you're reading botany or zoology. What is that one? You know, but these days, it's beginning to, people are having a better understanding. So, he said, he now read, okay, they said after first year, he was good, eh? he was already tested a clearance from your department for us to register you. By the time he came back, the HOD refused as an against every plea that she will release him. He wept. He cried. On daily basis, he will call of you that are intelligent goes. Who will be here? Ah, this guy thought he stopped coming to school. He will fast. He will pray. The Lord did not touch this woman's heart. Eventually, it okay, yeah. They shall not they shall not be planted yet. They shall not be sown. Yeah, they are stuck shall not take root, okay, in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither, and the wild wind shall take them away as stubble. 26. Isaiah 26. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, please, I'll prefer NIV. Lift your eyes and look to the heavens who created all this. He who brings 
out the starry host one by one. Not one of them is missing. The starry host, he will gather them. And we start naming them one by one. One by one. One by one. And the Bible says, because of his mighty power, not even one of them is what? Is missing. That's the God we should wait on. Do you think he will fail you? It may seem as if, yes, this, this God, he, he is not able, he will not be able to do it again. Well, it's not particular to you. Every, anybody can feel that way. I remember when I was about getting married. Somehow, is it fortunately, or unfortunately, I was with someone and eventually the person called off, traveled abroad and called off the relationship. And I waited. I waited and I was thinking that uh, hey, now that I've waited, hey, the Lord is going to do amazing things. The person he will send, when this first man sees him, he will understand that I am a daughter of Zion. You know? Um, but um, like he gave me is that I won't be able to wait for him. I said, too early. Maybe I will mention this in person, but maybe later 